lesson five five roots of real numbers so it starts simple and it gets uh not complicated but very lawyer like which pops up math a lot but what's the square root of 25 5 and the square root of 144 12. seems very simple but the big question do i need to take the positive and negative root and the answer is no this is the principal square root of 25. And this is, of course, the principal square root of 144. And if you're given the problem like this, that is saying, I just want the positive value. I just want the principal value. Um, if you have a problem that says this, x squared equals 25, and you take the square root of both sides, you need to put a plus minus in. Because your answer might be both principal square root and what we call the opposite of the principal square root. This is what I said about it being kind of lawyer-like. Do not get hung up on it. It's the kind of thing that can make students crazy. Just be aware of it. Uh, it pops up here in a few minutes where we have a certain problem with exponents that I'll show you. But this would be square root is 4, and then we're taking negative of it. This would be square root is 10, and then we're taking plus and minus of it. Plus and minus of it. Just be aware. Just be aware. Now, that only happens when we take a square root that's a positive, a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, an eighth root. If we're looking for the third root of eight, what times itself? Three times equals eight. Well, that's obvious, it's two. And the way we'd write that is, this means the square root of 8. It's implied that there's a 2, but we want the third root of 8, so we put a 3 there. And when we have an odd number in here, in what we call the index, this is called the index, this is called the radicand. Not that I'll ever remember this. I'm actually looking at a book right now as I'm saying this. And this is called the radical sign. All right. That's how we write it. Here's the fun part. What's the third root of negative 8? Because I just made the whole big stink about negatives and positives and all this stuff. Well, this one's easy. If it's an odd index... The 3 there, it'll work. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Done. Now I throw some variables in, so watch out. Square root plus or minus 5, and the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. I don't like this. I would much rather write this problem as this. And then we know we just multiply the exponents. We're going to get there. We're going to be there very soon. Not actually for a couple of lessons, but we'll be there. So for now, let's just play with it and keep people happy. Square root of 8 is to the fourth. Y squared plus 2. Fifth root of 32 is 2. Fifth root of x to the fifteenth is x to the third, because we go x to the third times x to the third to the fifth. Five times we would get x to the fifteenth. Y to the fourth. And not possible. It's a non-real answer, which is what your calculator will tell you if you try to put it in. We of course can write an answer with the letter I, 
But again, just like I showed you these fractional exponents, that's later. We'll do that soon enough. So all this is not too big a deal. You need some practice to get used to it. Now I'm going to freak you out. I apologize for this. It is not my intent to make things harder than they should be. We take the fourth root of x to the 12th. We say, oh, well, that's just x to the third. And it looks like, hey, we're done. But if we take any root, positive even, of an even power, so in this case, 12, and the result is an odd power, in this case, the 3, you need to take the absolute value. Here's the best way I can show it to you. Square root of negative 5 squared. If you're just messing with this, you say, oh, that's like a 2 and that's 2. That's going to give me negative 5. And that would be wrong. You have to put an absolute value around it. Why? Well, look at this a second. You have to do the inside first. So if you square it, you get 25. If you square root, you get 5. So this absolute value up above is just accounting for that. Because now it's to an odd power. And if x was negative, you would get a negative answer. But it's going to be positive because of this. Very confusing. I'm not going to lie. I don't quite get it myself sometimes. But get used to it. We have a third root of x to the 12th. We say we're taking an even power. And we get an odd answer. Well, we're not taking, pardon me, x to the 12th. We get x to the 4th. We're fine. We don't have to worry about it. So sometimes I'm confused by this, but you'll figure it out. That's it. Good luck.